Check out this headline right here. It says, Reeves urged to scrap free prescriptions for 60 to 65 year olds. It said that the move could raise the treasury more than six billion pounds in the lead up to the budget. Now, this is just a rumor at this point in time. We'll find out in a matter of weeks whether or not this is something that is actually gonna be implemented. But from what we know, we know that we're in a, in a situation at the moment where we need to raise more taxes, we need more revenue going through the system so that we can fix what's wrong with our country and our economy. And this is in addition to all these other things that we've heard about and we've covered here on the channel. Capital gains tax likely going to be equalized in terms of the rates with income tax. Uh, possible tweaks to inheritance tax, either in the percentage rate, either 40% increasing or maybe even nil rate bans. There's a pension rate that's been on the on the cards, maybe. There's, you know, ISAs being targeted as well. There's all kinds of stuff. But when we think about the elderly in society, they've already scrapped winter fuel payments for 10 million pensioners, which means that a portion of them will probably have to make the tough decision of whether or not they are able to heat their home or even eat this winter. Now you have this. And it's interesting looking through this article here the reason why they want to do this. And even more sinister, why they target this demographic of the society. And when I say sinister, I mean like really, really sinister. I'll show you this in a moment. But first and foremost, let's have a look at it. So what it's saying here is that a government report in 2021 found that uh, raising the threshold would uh, raise 6.2 billion pounds over the course of 10 years. So what they're essentially saying is their argument is to align this with the state pension age. So the state pension age currently is what, 66. So by not making them free for pensioners or elderly people between the age of 60 and 65, moving it to 60, that would raise 6.2 billion pounds over the course of 10 years. But why that demographic? And the reason that they've quoted in this article is actually quite surprising to me because when you think about the people that vote Labour or or are actually uh, politically active, you would typically think that they're going to be the older generation. But according to this article here, it says here that Labour's electoral base is heavily biased towards young and middle-aged voters. They don't do well among the over 65-year-olds, and it is unlikely to change. So that age group, it's probably an easier target for them for fiscal savings. I find that really, really sinister. So you're going to target a particular group because, well, actually, from a voting point of view, makes no difference. They don't really vote for us anyway, so this would be an easy target. I cannot believe that that would be the train of thought when looking at this option to save money. They don't vote for us. It's not going to change, so we're just going to target here. It just doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like a great way to govern. And maybe that's just me. You let me know in the chat down below. But ultimately, this is something that's actually on the cards right now. I think we're going to find out definitely in a few weeks' time. My biggest question around this is, it's £6 billion in the wider scheme of things. So we know at the moment that our national debt is 100% of our GDP. And it's been like it's been the first time we've got to this level since the 1960s. Now, if you go back in history, previously we've had moments where our, G, our, our debt has exceeded our GDP, and it looks like we're heading in that direction. But it feels like in times like this, how much of a difference is six billion quid going to make if the people that you're targeting are the elderly. And my problem with this is that these are people who have worked hard all their lives. They're not all going to be affluent, wealthy, or in a comfortable space financially. Now, if they did this, it would mean that they would have to pay between 50 and 100 pounds per year, roughly, for their prescriptions. Our prescription charges are pretty low in the UK anyway in England, I should say, anyway, but it still means it's an additional 50 to 100 pounds per year for prescriptions if they bought this in. And whilst that amount sounds small, it might not be small for a large portion of these people who are 60 to 65 who want to slow down, who've been working all their lives and may just be looking forward to getting the state pension 
and trying to have some semblance of a decent retirement. I feel like going after this demographic, it just feels wrong to me. It feels icky. It feels, it feels nonchalant. And I'm not okay with that. I'm, I'm just not. Um, but then again, on the other hand, I can understand that this is a really difficult situation and the government's scrambling for tax revenue. I mean, literally scrambling for tax revenue. So what do you do? And maybe in even answering my own question of, you know, how much of a difference is six billion quid going to make? It's six billion quid. In the scheme of things, it may not be a large amount of money. But I know as well as you do that every little helps. Every little helps. And yeah, it's just, this is a tough one. This is a tough one to kind of, you know, get my head around. I hope this isn't something that actually gets announced uh, at the end of the month. I hope it's not. But the fact that it's on the table just tells you how desperate things are. And look, I'm completely aware that on the channel, we have been covering a lot of this stuff. And I cover this because it is relevant in terms of the conversation that we have and, and letting you know what's coming down the track so that you can best prepare from a financial point of view. Because we talk about money and money is really the core of what we're talking about here. And this will impact people's finances, people's financial well-being, mental well-being, just holistic well-being as a whole. But in ending this video, I kind of want to, um, I just want to send a little bit of a reminder. We had a death in the family today. And whilst we talk a lot about all of this stuff, um, and it makes for an outlet for us to share our opinions of the country and the world that we live in and the direction of travel and our displeasure, I think that we do kind of need to be aware that we need to hug the ones that we love and appreciate them for when they're here. And not just the ones that we love, just appreciate the moment that we're in right now. We're all alive. Most of us are healthy. Yes, all of this stuff isn't great. The economy might be rubbish and it might feel like the country's going to pop, but we're here. We're healthy. Uh, we have some agency over large portions of our life. This stuff we can't control. And yes, it's going to impact us, but we have a lot of agency. And um, time waits for no one, man. And it's like, it's really, really weird because this person's 68 years old. And um, that's not, I don't deem that as old anymore. Um, maybe it is, I don't know. It's just, it's put a lot of things into perspective, really, to be honest. And um, yeah. I just wanted to kind of like close this video on that because I think, yes, all of this stuff is happening in the background. We're talking about what might be coming down the track, but we've got agency and we need to kind of be appreciative for, for the things that we do have.